On the last episode of Born a Car, Alex and I rushed to convert our E30 from a rally car to a chump car. A night prior, we were still working on finding a replacement brake caliper. Well, it's been an eventful 24 hours. We drove from New Jersey to Alabama, got the car through tech inspection, and we have working brakes. The only problem now is we have a completely unproven car. So Ryan, as someone that has not driven this car in this form, what yeah. is there to know right now? I don't know, I haven't driven this car in this form. Oh, you haven't? No. Well, you drove it since the rally, right? No. All right, so it's Friday night. The car is behind me, and we made it 15 hours from Alabama, and we're here. We've got all our drivers here. we got our crew. we got our camera guys. It's about 8.30 at night. We're gonna pack this thing up. We did a couple quick checks, get some sleep, and tomorrow morning, we're going 70 cars deep into the first corner of Barber Motorsports Park, and I'm super excited for this. I, I can't believe we got this far. Pat and Rubber Ducky, we made it this far. Lucky duck. So if you're unfamiliar, Born a Car is the story of an E30 that we picked up for cheap and thrashed through many challenges. So far this car has drifted in New Jersey, rock crawled in Colorado, and stage rallied in New York. Now, come sunrise, our E30 would meet its final challenge. The 15 hours of Barber Motorsports Park Chump Car Endurance Race. Chump Car is a grassroots endurance racing series designed for racers to compete at the coolest tracks around the U.S. for a great price. Our race happens to be at Barber Motorsports Park in Leeds, Alabama. It's a beautifully designed track with sweeping corners and fun elevation changes. And for an Alabama morning, it was damn cold. Our drivers for the event consisted of myself, my good friend Alex Jager, Dan Downey, our rally savior, and the famous J.F. Musial. As we finish the driver's meeting, the teams rush to their cars. The field consists of many BMWs and Miatas, but there's an endless variety of other makes and models. Chump car is like a book you can't judge by its cover. There are some seriously fast cars in this uh, series. They may look like shit, but I know this uh, fake Martini Racing 935 is very quick. Alex would start the race off. Before we knew it, the cars were gridded up and ready to start day one's eight hours of racing. Alex left the pit area in a car that hasn't driven since we rallied it months ago. Alex was running fast times right off the bat, and things were seemingly off to a good start. Alex, your best time is a 153. I have to say, alignment wise, tire wise, suspension wise, this thing feels f***ing amazing. We did have two small problems. Got a lot of smoke off the right side in turn one as he comes down the hill like a solid trail of it. So far, the only problem he has is the rear tires are rubbing both left and right fender. And other than that, the car is mechanically holding up pretty well. He's going to be coming in here pretty shortly. We're going to have to do a driver change. I get in the car and we do fuel because the only other thing we can't figure it out is the fuel gauge is kind of intermittently working. Alex came in for the first swap of the day. It's an alarming, or alarmingly good feeling car. Like it has absolutely no alignment. Where we don't really know much about the tire setup. The quarter panel ate an inch of the tire off of it, and it, the steering wheel we had to recenter. The thing feels great. You throw it into a turn, it hooks and it goes. I just came here to do one thing: drive. My truck broke, so I'm pissed off, and I drove like an animal. I jumped in the car and got after. Great battle with this here 
Mustang, we were like f***ing training in three times a lap. Talking about Steve McQueen out there. Hey Ryan, we're gonna have to have you stay out there a little longer, so if you can uh, kind of ease off the turns. Well, we need you to stay out about five minutes longer than we normally do, so we don't have to do another fuel stop at the end of the day. All right, I'm gonna back off for the bit then. That was a whole different learning experience for me and it was super awesome because you're not really going that fast and you're not going through the woods, but uh, when you have three or four cars around you fighting for the same turn, it's just as exhilarating for sure. Yeah, it's definitely cutting down. I'm going to come in now. The rest of our afternoon would consist of one hour and 20 minute stints for drivers. We'd pit, swap drivers, fuel up, and go again. And this lasted us all the way till evening, where Dan would bring the car home in the top 25. It's 7.30 in the morning, it's still freezing in Alabama, but we've got new pads, we have new tires, we did a couple things to clean the car up, and we banged out the fenders to try to get clearance on the rear tires, because these Nitto NT05s, as you can see, we spent all day rubbing the sidewall off on them, and it was smoking like a drift car, but somehow these things still held up and we ran pretty much the entire day on a sidewall that looked like this. So I can't, I've got nothing but good things to say about that tire. So we got four fresh tires on there. That's why we got cool green wheels now. And um, we're ready to go. JF's starting the first stint of the day. He's gonna try to go almost two hours on no fuel stops before we have a pause. And if we could do that, then we could certainly move up the field because we're sitting in 25th right now. And I think for a couple of blokes that have never raced one of these things before, we're doing pretty well. All the smarter spotters because we're one half level higher than all those guys over there. Green flag, green flag, green flag. All right, we're going racing. JF running a two hour stint was a big ask, considering this was 40 minutes longer than we had been running without refuel. But going two hours without stopping was necessary because of a mandatory hour break at 11. We didn't want to pit before the break because we could fuel during the hour pause. So JF was to stay out and try to maintain our 23rd position. That was a really good JF, that was a 153.9. Quarter past 10 was when JF started to complain about fuel stuff. We kept him out on track, gambling that the strategy would work and not leave him out of gas somewhere. 30, you have to stay out for 20 more minutes. Happy that, 20 more minutes. Doing the best I can, guys. Getting bad. It's gonna be right to the limit with the fuel. Uh, by the way, the fuel gauge reads totally empty. It's the first time it's ever worked. How long has the light been on, JF? 
I noticed it about a half hour ago. <laughs> Holy sh**. It is 10.49. I will let you know as soon as we have caution. Full course yellow, just coast it. Awesome job, awesome job. With the yellow out, JF idled the car into the pits on fumes. <laughs> Woo! That was a great stint. I can't get over that. It's, out, it's completely out of fuel. I can't get over how perfect that worked. After the break, Alex was back in the car. <laughs> Green flag, green flag, green flag. But it didn't take long until I noticed a problem from the spotter tower. Car's smoking, car's smoking. Our car is smoking? Yeah. Alex, what's going on? It feels a little, it feels fine. I mean, the car's driving okay. Uh, it has power. It's a little hot though, so I'll pull off. Alex rolled the car into the pits, steam spewing from the radiator. We took it back to the trailer, pulled the radiator out, and found that the engine fan had nicked it, causing a good-sized hole. You know, that's a problem with a lot of these um, endurance racing events is that you don't take into account how much vibration and how many uh, carpets can move things around within the, the, the uh, engine compartment. We would need a new radiator, so we all scattered around the pits asking teams for a spare. I ran back with one, but unfortunately it was from an older model and the inlet and outlet hose fittings were opposite. So while the team discussed other alternatives, I called every parts store in the Birmingham area. Okay, um, yeah, we're gonna have to pass cause, just because we're racing, but thank you. All right, thank you. Take care, man, thanks. Just go get a huge flex hose. We just need to like make one or two hoses. To put on the old radiator? Yeah. Fuck the underwater padding, I might have the hoses too. Alright, it's cool how once as soon as you're out, like dudes come over and they like try to help you. It is cool. It is like it reminds me of the rally community. The BMW community here is strong and there's so many E30s running this event. People know the car, so they want to help and they want to get you back out racing. With a new radiator not available, we were going to attempt to make a system by cutting up old hose and running custom lines to the older model radiator. It was a stretch, but our only hope to get back on track. Dan was getting creative, utilizing an extra metal crossover tube to run under the radiator. From there, Alex and Dan trimmed the hoses to fit, and JF and I got everything fastened. Once the hoses were fastened, we started getting water in the system, using whatever we could find for fluid that fit within the rules. With the car on the ground, it was running and staying cool. I rushed to get back in the car and make up for lost time. We lost 12 positions, and I was determined to get a few back. Okay, Ryan, you're entering track in position 35, T35. The next car in front of you is three laps ahead, and the car behind you is one lap behind. but things would get worse. I lost third, I lost fourth, I am second and fifth. All right, so I just got out of the car for the only stint that I'm gonna do today. 
and Alex was in beforehand and he said fourth gear was feeling really funny, starting not to work. And I got in the car and fourth gear started wearing out more and more and more. Finally, I was just going third to fifth and then third gear went on the corkscrew. So I was going second to fifth, doing most of the track in fifth. It's pretty much the last stint of the day. Dan's in the car now. He's pretty much running the entire track in fifth. It's really slow, but at least uh, looks like we're gonna finish. Somehow Dan managed to keep the car in good shape, but the officials black flagged him for the side-by-side -side contact. We're gonna lose the position. We just did. With a couple laps to go, Dan was released and raced for the checker. Day two was proving to be far from perfect. But if we crossed the line, we'd have ourselves a finish. finish concludes the story of the E30. Yeah. Woo! Right where we left it, huh? It worked! Right where we put it. In the past few episodes, you've seen this thing drift, rock crawl, rally, and now circuit race. If I'm honest, this was a tiresome project, and I got a bit lucky that the car somehow lasted all the tests. Do I recommend trying to convert your car to try all sorts of different events? No, probably not. But we proved that you can do it. And if you give it a go, I promise you'll have a hell of a story to tell afterwards. We pieced this thing together in a couple weeks in Alex's shop, and we kind of crossed our fingers, hoped and prayed that this thing would make it around the track at least for day one. In fact, we got most of day two as well, except for our broken radiator. So we're definitely all smiles here at the end of the day. I have a bunch of people to thank. I mean, Nitto for bringing us tires, Bilstein for the suspension, Redline for the oil, Broken Motorsports for keeping this thing in his shop for months on end, building the cage for us, doing all sorts of stuff, getting it ready for rally, you know, drift, whatever we needed, and JF and all the guys from The Drive, and of course, Alex Jager for being my right-hand man for this entire project, learning E30s because both of us knew nothing about them. So thank you guys so much for sticking around and watching us torment the C30. Hopefully we'll be doing more stuff in the future, but for now, I'm Ryan Semancic. Catch you guys soon. <laughs>